Uh, the reason why there are many people who are wanted to practice today's uh, shamanism, some, some, some of them are more related with uh, indigenous traditions like Native Americans, in, uh, in South, South Americans, and in Mongolian and Tibet and different places. Maybe it's a very simple thing. Basic, what people want, what really people want is the connection. Connection. They wanted to connect. They lost connection in their life. They lost connection to themselves. They lost connection to with their family. They lost connection. They lost trust in in the politics and many, many things. They lost things, they're seeking connection. And in a way, a simpler or easier or more familiar way, a place for connection is to the nature. And they wanted to connect with these spirits. And they're also interested something more than themselves. What is that more than themselves? They still wanted to understand something. What is beyond me, ordinary me? How I can connect something beyond just this ordinary my suffering? So they are seeking for connection. The original Himalayan uh, shamanic traditions, it's a different form of spirit spirituality, uh, some sense of original form of spirituality, and some of them has also dark side, and some of them have more light side. And throughout the Himalaya regions, or throughout even around the world, in the shamanic form, there are forms of sacrificing things, which is the dark side of it. And then there are, there are other, other side where are there are really like a, a genuine a sense of respect to the nature and the elements, natural elements, and the spirits of the nature. Some of the things that I encountered with them was a very interesting experience that I, I thought was that what they were saying, they don't have a temple. Uh, they don't have, a, of course, church or anything like that. They have a little shrines in the individual homes, and they have a rocks, feather, and some candles. And the, this symbol, na symbol of nature are direct access for them to the spirit, great spirit, to the, to the essence, to, to their great spirit. You know, many other traditions have so much form and images and which represents things, but raw nature, nature are more direct access to the truth. Oh. These, some of these Himalayan form of shamanism, um, they don't particularly talk about the ultimate liberation or enlightenment or Buddhahood or something like that, but they do uh, feel like they are more connecting to the source, um, connecting to the great spirit, uh, connecting to the deity. So, and through the connection to the nature and these great spirits, they feel like they're gaining a lot of healing powers to heal. In the burn tradition, we have nine ways of burn. And the first four ways of burn are, it's called causal vehicles. In those causal vehicles, there is a lot of work of elements, spirits, healings, rituals, and um, exorcism, and uh, so there, there are many practices like that, which some of them overlaps with other like shamanic tradition. There might, might be some similarities, but in the burn itself, it doesn't call itself shamanism or like that. We don't. It does not. The word shamanism is not applied in the burn tradition. Work of five element, in its most gross way, like a raw element working, it it is in the causal vehicles. And if you, if you prefer, you can call it like it's similar to other shaman, shamanic work. But again, in Bern, we don't, we don't call Bern, Bern as a sh shamanism. And uh, working with these same elements in its higher form, more like a, a, the more form of wind or chi or energy, which, is, which are recognized in our body, 
So then there is a higher level of practices, more like in a tantricism, in tantric tradition, where through the movement, through the breathing, through the postures, through gaze, you're, you're connecting with a certain elemental energies to, uh, to bring into the certain state of mind or to influence our mind to bring into the certain state of mind in higher form meditation. So you're still practicing element, but in a different way. Then in highest form, like in a Dzogchen, you're still practicing element in most highest form of the elements, five elements, in its form of light. So white light, blue light, red light, green light, yellow light, it's referred as a five pure lights. So these five pure lights is still the most essential form of five elements, but it's totally linked with a state of awareness. A different state of awareness or different five wisdom is called five wisdom. So, so, so when you're practicing with the five wisdom uh, in its highest form of awareness, then you, you're gaining a liberation of rainbow body. So, so use of five element, either it's in a gross form or it's an energetic form or it's highest form as a light. All three are complementary. They're linked to each other undeniable connection that's important because sometimes in Tibetan tradition it seems like people are less aware of that so those who are working with the raw element and they, they think it's like lower or less important or not important or even sometime something bad uh, and and so when we're doing more like energetic work on physical like yoga or something like that or then it's only a physical but it's not related with uh, uh, enhancing higher awareness or something like that. But uh, the real, more complete understanding is to understand all these three ways that it's, it's the element in its form, element it's in energy, element it's in the pure form of light. They all complement each other. As a human being, you need to practice all of them together uh, to, to have the best outcome.